Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guy in the Cube. In this video, it's all about templates and parameters and the practical use of both. All coming up next. Okay guys, parameters, templates. Why all of a sudden are you talking about that, Patrick? Well, let me tell you a story. Wait, wait, before I get, before I get into that, just wanna say thanks to my little family. Cool t-shirt, it's actually my pops. This is my dad, yup, he was a cowboy. A cowboy, ugh, cowboy, a cowboy, and yup, I had some beer in his hand. All right, sup pops. Okay, anyway, so back to templates and parameters. So why, why all of a sudden are you talking about templates and parameters? Well, I gotta tell you a story. So a fellow Microsoft, he hit me up and he was like, Patrick, I got a customer, they create these Power BI desktop files, and they wanna share them with other people that leverage their product, okay? So basically, they have a product that's backed by a SQL Server database that could reside on a SQL Server instance named, or a SQL Server named Patrick, and one a SQL Server named Adam, and one named Son, and one named Daughter, whatever, right? And so when they open the file up, Somebody's got to go and modify the connection strings and keep it, you know, and fix it so it doesn't just crash out. Um, so the report actually works and it's pointing to the correct data source. How do you fix that? How do you set that up? Well, um, I had a couple of thoughts. And so the best way for me to show you how to fix it is let's head over to my laptop. All right. So let's pretend that this is the file that I want to share with all my customers that leverage the piece of software that's backed by the database that I use, right? And so um, check it out. So I have a little, really simple model, right? I have one fact table, my metrics table, and then I have a couple of um, dimension tables here, okay? And so I want to email this PBIX file with someone and then I want them to use it, but their database is hosted on a separate server. Now, the schema in these databases are exactly the same. It's just that the database name and the server name are different, okay? That's the only different, but the schema name is the same. So take a look at Management Studio. Let me set the stage here just a little bit for you. So for example, I have this server and this server, but they both um, have AdventureWorks DW 2014, right? They're both storing that database on it, right? They're both, host, both hosting that database. But when I one customer is using this server, and the other customers using that server. So when they open up the PBIX file, I need to change the server that it's connected to because obviously they're keep keeping different data in each one and I want their reports to reflect that data. I hope that makes sense, right? If not, send me some questions, post some comments below, right? Post them in the comments below, all right? So check this out, all right? So here's the, here's the report. It's all nice and pretty, but I wanna change the database and the server that it's connected to. There's an easy way to do this, right? If you go here to edit queries, choose data source settings and just click change source, bam, they could change it. And he's like, what? They're not gonna know how to do that. And I don't wanna make them do that because when they open the report, it's gonna have all these little X's all over the place, right? And I don't want that. I don't want the X's all over the place. I was like, all right, dude, calm down, calm down. Won't get you any X's, just back up a little bit. All right, so maybe that's not the best way. Then I said, you know, what you can do is you can go into edit queries, right? And this is where the parameters came in at, right? This is where the parameters came into play. You can go and create some parameters. You can go manage, sorry, wrong one, manage new parameter. And then you can create a parameter for the instance or the data server, whatever you want to call it in the database. So you can create one there and then you can go into each one of these advanced editor and replace the actual database name and the server name with those parameter values. Now, wait a minute, Patrick. So you're telling me if I import 100 tables, I gotta go change this for each one. Now you told me, Patrick, you said, not lazy, I'm just efficient. This doesn't seem very efficient to me. Okay, okay, you guys are right. It is not efficient. So we gotta come up with a better way. All right, so let me show you. So let's start from scratch here. I'm gonna open up a desktop, just a blank one. Where is the mad scientist going? Where is this guy going, right? So check this out. Before you start designing your report, before you start designing your report, you go to file. Let's close this splash screen if it opens up. Close the splash, blah, blah, blah. close the splash screen. Then go to file, 
options and settings, data source settings. And what I want you to do, sorry, scratch that, right? Don't go to data source settings, right? Go to file, options and settings, options. And then what I want you to do is I want you to look for, click query editor. What I want you to do is look for query editor, click it, and you will see a checkbox um, under the section label parameters called always allow parameterization in data source and transformation dialogues. Check that box. Doesn't require a restart. Doesn't require a restart. Click OK. Now, now what you're going to do is import your data. So now I'm starting to design my report. So I'm going to say get some data, choose SQL Server, and notice now, right, you have some checkboxes, some options here. So let's do this again, right? I'm going to check the box so you can see what it looks like. Then I'm going to check it again so you can see what it looks like, just so you can get a sense of how it works. So click the drop down. I'm going to choose new parameter. I'm going to call this one SQL instance. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a database a server name, drop it in there, right? And then I'm going to call this one. Notice how it puts the name of the parameter in the box. I'm going to do another one. Uh, hang on, new parameter. And I'm going to call this one database. Make sure when you do this to make sure that box label required is checked. Okay. And then I'm going to get my database name. I'll paste that in and then click OK. And then click OK again. And now I'm connected to the database, the server, the database, and I can import the tables I want, right? I just have a couple here. Just import those tables, right? And let's go ahead and click edit to see what it actually did behind the scenes, okay? Click edit. So now instead of going in and modifying each one, you know, after the fact, Power BI, the query editor, is smart enough to take care of this for. So if I imported 100 tables, let's go into the advanced editor, it automatically injects the parameters into my M for me, right? Into the mashup language, it automatically injects it. And now I can reuse that. And all I need to do is modify those parameters and it'll dynamically change my connection string as long as the schema is the same, okay? So if the schema is different, you can run into some other challenges, but we're not gonna talk about that in this session, okay? We're gonna hit cancel. And so let's, so that's how the parameters, right? So when you're setting up, when you're importing, make sure you check that box and then you can specify your parameters for your connection string. So you can kind of make it dynamic. The next thing you want to do, right? So since I'm going to share this out with other people in the world, right? Other people are going to use this, not just me, instead of just saving a file and making them go, you know, edit, query, edit queries, edit parameters, right? When they open it up, I want it to prompt them these right I wanted to say hey I want you to use this I want you to use that okay um, so we can go here and choose edit parameters and see I can change it here but what I'd like to happen is when they open up the Power BI desktop file it automatically prompts them so it's more intuitive so nobody has to figure out where to go and click to change things and do things all right so let's check it out let's do this so I'm gonna go here what I've done is I've saved a template and watch what's going to happen when the template opens. Watch what's going to happen. Imagine an end user, right? It's like running a report or something like that. And before I can run the report, it's saying, hey, you need to tell me something. So what I need to tell it is I'm going to give it a different database name this time, a different server name, same database. So I'm going to give it SQL instance of that and I'm going to provide the same database name. It could be a different database as long as the scheme is the same. And then I'm going to go ahead and click. Let's click edit. We'll go ahead and click edit and we'll give it just a little bit to open up and do what it needs to do. It's actually retrieving a preview of the data for us. Um, like Adam likes to say, it's Patrick speed. I don't have the best internet connection. Um, it's getting better though, right? We're about to go fiber in just a little bit. There you go. Right. And so you can see that all my data is now imported into it. And if I right click and go into the advanced editor, you can see right there that it's using those parameters. So now basically when I share out this template with other people, as long as the scheme is the same, if they input the server instance or the server name and the database name, it'll automatically populate the data, 
do everything we need to do. So we're gonna go ahead and click close and apply. Let it run all of its queries, do everything it needs to do to go get the data. And it's against a different data source. So remember, I was connecting to some obfuscated server name before, some really strange database name, server name, and now I'm connecting to BA Analytics. And just like that, right, I've loaded up my report. I have a dynamic connection string. If I send you this template, as long as you have that AdventureWorks database running, um, pop in a server name, then your data, your report should render. If anybody wants a copy, shoot me a note. I'm happy to put it up somewhere for you guys to download it. What do you think? If you've done this a different way, you have some different ideas, post it in the comments below. Um, if this is your first time visiting the channel, please be sure to subscribe. And if you like my video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching from Adam and Patrick. We'll see you next time. Yeah, it's so funny. Yo!